Link, The Faces of Evil, Zelda, The Wand of Gamelan and Zelda's Adventure are action-adventure games produced by Philips for the CDI as part of Nintendo's The Legend of Zelda video game series. Not designed for Nintendo platforms, the games owe their existence to negotiations related to Nintendo's decision not to have Philips create a CD add-on to the Super NES. During these negotiations, Philips secured the rights to use Nintendo characters in CDI third-party developer games. The Faces of Evil and The Wand of Gamelan were developed by Animation Magic and were both released in North America on October 10, 1993, and Zelda's Adventure was developed by Voridus and was released in North America on June 5, 1994. The games were given little funding or development time, and Nintendo provided only cursory input. None of the games are canonical to the Zelda franchise, the Philips CDI did not sell well and the games saw relatively small sales figures. Though the games initially received largely positive reviews, they have been universally criticized since the mid-2000s. This is attributed to the reaction of many gamers to the obscure game's full-motion video cutscenes when they first became widely available through video-sharing websites such as YouTube. The cutscenes are perceived to be of poor quality. Because the aging early 1990s visual effects of the titles failed to live up to the graphic effects of the 2000s, and because for many fans this was their first experience of the games, the CDI Zelda titles have developed a critical reputation as particularly poor based largely on animation quality and to an extent awkward controls. In the eyes of devout hardcore gamers, according to Edge, the games are now considered tantamount to blasphemy. Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelan are played using the side-scrolling view introduced in Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, while Zelda's Adventure has a top-down view reminiscent of the original The Legend of Zelda. All the CDI Zelda games begin with animated FMVs to illustrate the capabilities of the CD-ROM format, save Zelda's Adventure, which begins with a live-action video. History. In 1989, Nintendo signed a deal with Sony to begin development of a CD-ROM based system known as the SNES CD, also known as the Nintendo PlayStation, with separated words to be an add-on to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System that would allow for FMV and larger games. However, Nintendo broke the agreement and instead signed with Philips to make the add-on, which caused Sony to spin off their add-on into its own console called the PlayStation with PlayStation as one word due to a copyright issue with the trademark, PlayStation, owned by Nintendo. Witnessing the poor reception of the Sega Mega CD, Nintendo scrapped the idea of making an add-on entirely. As part of dissolving the agreement with Philips, Nintendo gave them the license to use five of their characters, including Link, Princess Zelda, and Ganon, for games on Philips's console called the CDI. After the partnership's dissolution, contracting out to independent studios, Philips subsequently used the characters to create three games for the CDI, with Nintendo taking no part in their development except to give input on the look of the characters based on the artwork from Nintendo's original two titles and that of their respective instruction booklets. Philips insisted that the development studios utilize all aspects of the CDI's capabilities including FMV, high-resolution graphics, and CD-quality music. Because the system had not been designed as a dedicated video game console, there were several technical limitations, such as laggy controls especially for the standard infrared controller, and numerous problems in streaming audio, memory, disk access, and graphics. The first two games were showcased at the 1993 CES and surprised audiences with their degree of animation. All the CDI games in the Legend of Zelda series were released after Link's Awakening but before Ocarina of Time, as illustrated in the timeline with the relevant games marked with asterisks. <laughs> <laughs> Video games <laughs> Link, The Faces of Evil Paired with Zelda, Wand of Gamelan in a simultaneous release, Link, The Faces of Evil represents the first of the Zelda games to be released by Philips for the CDI. Following the traditional Link Saves Zelda plotline, Faces of Evil was patterned most closely upon Nintendo's previous side-scroller, Zelda II, The Adventure of Link. The game broke new ground in the video game industry by using outsourced Russian animation to create all cutscenes, and the game received largely positive contemporary reception. 
Modern criticism is almost universal in its harsh negativity toward the game and the animated cutscenes have become particular targets of derision. Zelda, The Wand of Gamelan Reversing the traditional Link saves Zelda plotline, Wand of Gamelan stars Zelda as she adventures to rescue Link and her father the King who have not returned from their quest. As with Faces of Evil, the game was patterned most closely upon Nintendo's previous side-scroller, Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, and again features outsourced Russian animation for all cutscenes. Despite the game's similarly positive contemporary reception along with Faces of Evil, modern critics have almost unanimously derided and ridiculed the game for its inability to live up to modern expectations with the animated cutscenes again having become a particular target of negative reception. Zelda's Adventure Released nearly eight months after the first two Zelda CDI games, Zelda's Adventure was created by a different third-party developer, Voridus. The game again follows a non-traditional Zelda Saves Link plotline, but it uses a different game engine than Faces of Evil and Wand of Gamelan. Whereas the first two CDI games were patterned on the side-scrolling Zelda II, The Adventure of Link, Zelda's Adventure took the top-down The Legend of Zelda as its model. Zelda's Adventure featured FMV cutscenes, but rather than using drawn animation, the game used live action scenes. Reception for the game was poor, and whereas some modern critics have given more nuanced reviews of the first two games, modern criticism for Zelda's Adventure is unanimously negative. 